Why do Victorians always look so miserable in the portraits? And there's actually two reasons for that. First one is technology and second one is convention. So let's talk about how they influence the look of old photographs. The most common reason that is proposed for the miserable look of people in portraits is that Victorians weren't used to being photographed and didn't really understand what was happening. And also that Victorian life was a lot tougher than it is today, so everyone was miserable all the time. Well, the real reasons are, as with many things, a lot more mundane. So to understand why portraits look that way, we first need to understand a little bit about the technology of photography. There was approximately four types of photographic medium created in the early 1800s, and despite the claim that Daguerre was the inventor with the Daguerreotype, there was also the work of Niepce, Fox Talbot, and Bayard. We're not here to debate the invention of photography, but rather to highlight how, despite having several different methods available, they all shared a similar trait. And that trait was the exposure time. So the early processes had what we today will call an extremely low ISO, or rather not very sensitive to light. And that coupled with lens technology of the time meant it took a significant amount of light to create an exposure, which means either having very powerful light sources, which aren't available, or having very long um, exposure time. So those who are familiar with the exposure triangle and how it works, realize that the longer the shutter is open, the more chance there is of having movement blur in the image. And that is frequently seen within early photography. It can be the body shifting slightly, but these were said to create dreamlike images, mysterious. And in some cases, they were used to create spirits and misused by mediums. And in other cases, the effect resulted in the city streets appearing to be empty as the people moved too quickly to be registered by the camera. Now, this meant that for an effective portrait to be made, subjects had to be still for really long periods of time, and we're talking minutes here, not seconds. This meant that the subjects often got tired and shifted the weight around, even minutely to alleviate the stress of holding still. Photographers quickly adopted the use of chairs and other ways of supporting their subject to help with this fatigue, going to the extreme to build frames into the chairs to further control movement, and that was by restricting the movement of necks and arms and the body. And no doubt it was a very uncomfortable situation. So this just left one thing, the face. And effectively, the invention of resting bitch face, subjects were encouraged to relax the face and avoid gesture in order to avoid the blur which would occur from tiny movements in the muscles. And it also helped avoid the pain from holding a fixed expression for a long time. So why then, all you knowledgeable people are asking, why did resting bitch face continue into the early 20th century when exposure times for film had greatly increased and people didn't need to stay fixed in place for minutes and that is where we need to address convention. So the idea that early photographic subjects were not familiar with the process of having a photograph made it is true. It was a new technology and thanks to the complex process of preparing negatives, making the image and then producing a fixed final image, it appeared very mystical and scientific. However, the idea of a portrait had been around for centuries. The invention of photography is actually more an invention of fixing the image permanently rather than it just fading away or being traced by hand. The painted portrait was a popular and well understood genre of art. Images of those wealthy enough to commission them appeared in public buildings, libraries, schools, courthouses, galleries, homes, various publications and the reproduction techniques of etching and lithography helped to distribute images relatively widely. The one key aspect which influences photographic representation beyond the technological limitations though is the fact that painted portraits and early photography was only really accessible to the wealthy. So the majority of people saw images which depicted the local elites and in turn those local elites mainly saw images of regional and national elites. This meant that the conventions of the portrait were determined by a relatively small group of people, being the leaders of society. What they determined to be the best way to be seen influenced downwardly the way people aspired to be depicted. You could argue that the reason that painted portraiture often depicts stoic looking people are the same reasons photography resorted to controlling movement, the time required to paint the person. But painting doesn't actually require physical reference. The images are made by the artist, not by the technology. 
if the subject gets up and walk around, this is not recorded in the image. And the reason, John Berger argues, for the stoicness is the symbolic meaning, the outward projection of internal control of emotion. This is reflected in the portraits of the working classes, often seen as jolly, laughing and quite frequently drunk. The conventions of the portrait helps to justify the position of the elites by describing them as people of self-control, as opposed to the lack of control of the working classes. And in turn, everything is okay because look, they're really happy just how they are. So next time you see a picture of your great great granddad and wonder why he's such a grump, maybe he was strapped into a chair and forced to hold that position for 20 minutes or Perhaps, if it's something from the 1920s and 30s, the photographer was probably trying to replicate the conventions of portraiture and felt that copying the stoic look made his subjects look a lot more like they were powerful and in control. So, that is a very brief overview of another aspect of conventions of portraiture after last video. And it's a bit of a brief overview about why a lot of Victorian images look so stoic and so wooden and so miserable and this isn't to say that all victorian portraits are like that there is vast swathes of people experimenting with images experimenting with the way that we look on camera and it's really interesting to see the similarities even 200 years apart of the kind of pictures that were made then and the kind of pictures that are made here now if i've done a good job in editing i'll include a couple of images around here and you'll be able to see that it's not just miserable Victorian times. Now, I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video, if you give it the YouTube doobly-doo, which should be somewhere around here. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.